Word of God from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 6, 16 through 29. Hear the word of God. So do not pray for these people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. Do not plead with me, for I will not listen to you. Do you not see what they are doing in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers light the fire, the women knead the dough and make cakes to offer to the queen of heaven. They pour out drink offerings to other gods to arouse my anger. But am I the one they are provoking, declares the Lord. Are they not rather harming themselves to their own shame? Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place, on man and beast, on the trees of the field and on the crops of your land. It will burn and not be quenched. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Go ahead, add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meal, the meat yourselves. For when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I gave them this command, Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I commanded you, that it may go well with you, but they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubborn inclinations of their evil hearts, they went backward, not forward. From the time your ancestors left Egypt until now, day after day, again and again, I sent you, my servants, the prophets. But they did not listen to me or pay attention. They were stiff-necked and did more evil than their ancestors. When you tell them all this, they will not listen to you. When you call to them, they will not answer. Therefore say to them, This is the nation that has not obeyed the Lord. Its God or responded to correction. Truth has perished. It has vanished from their lips. Cut off your hair. Throw it away. Take of a lament on the barren heights. For the Lord has rejected. Abandon this generation that is under his wrath. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we have envied others in the world so to climb the social ladder and dwell the overlong with the pride on our successes. Please forgive us our disobedient heart and blunder us Pour your eternal life back into our world-stained souls, we ask, and we cry. Once again, we knock the door, the gate of heaven, and we beg you, God, our Father. This day you send us your Holy Spirit and dwell in our hearts and grant us a renewed faith in the Lord Christ Jesus and our humility before you. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. God says his people never listened. It's in the past. Tense. And it's in our lives, present, now. God says again and again, they never listened. And he says, and they never listen. And 
they will never listen. Sometimes a man of God preaches and nobody listens. It's not surprising. It was from the beginning, the Garden of Eden, until the Lord returns. It happened to the prophet Isaiah. It happened to prophet Jeremiah. It happened to those prophets all along the history of Israel. The Lord made the heart of his people loose, which means cold. If your heart is cold this morning, it's not your work. It is God who did so. It even happened to Jesus Christ. He spoke to the people in parables. All those four Gospels you, you can read over and over and over again. Matthew chapter 13, verses 11 through 15, it says that once again, You hear my word, you will not listen. You will not understand. Your heart cannot reach to the deep of the word. So Matthew chapter 13, verses 11 through 15. Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, here you is disciples, but not to them, those people in Judah. Whoever has will be given more, they will have an abundance who does not have even what they have will be taken from them. That's what happened today in Jeremiah, in Jerusalem. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. So I'm telling you in parables for you not understanding. So you'll be ever seeing but never perceiving. Verse 15, for this people's heart has become closed. They hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. But not so, because I don't want them to pray. I don't want them to be saved. That is what Jeremiah conveyed the message from the oracle of the Lord. That's what God told to him. So he gave, Jeremiah gave Israel his best shot, like Noah did for 120 years before the flood. Jeremiah preached repentance as well as he knows how to preach it, but the people did not listen. Their hearts were far from God. And what should do Jeremiah next? Jeremiah surely should pray. That is what Moses did for the rebellious people against God and him. And David prayed too before the disaster from God comes upon the people of God. When the judgment of God was about to fall upon Israel between and because he had numbered, and then David said to God, I'm the one. 
who has sinned and done wrong. So these are but sheep. I know a few of them are wolves. Quite a number of them are gone astray. But it is me who committed sin. God, it's me that you have to punish. Not for these people. Ezra, the priest, did the same thing. He prayed for his people's wrongdoing, married to those pagan women. And then he tore his tunic out, pulled out his hair, went into mourning. He prayed, Oh my God, I'm too ashamed and disgraced to lift up my face to you, my God, because our sins are higher than our heads and our guilt has reached to the heavens. I pray for them, for their forgiveness. Nehemiah prayed too for the people, rebellious, not just rebellious, living in the idolatrous world, in the way of adult, adultery. When the people sin, the prophets, priests, and kings were to intercede for their salvation. Surely Jeremiah should pray. But God commanded him not to pray. You don't pray for these people. And he gave these words in four different ways. Do not pray for these people. Do not offer a plea for them. Do not make a petition for them. Do not play with me. I will not listen to you. You never heard God command not to pray to those priests, prophets, kings, and ministers? Have you ever heard? You don't pray for these people. You don't pray for that. And no, it's this only time God gave Jeremiah this instruction. He will give once again. And he did once before. And he will do it again and again for these people in the book of Jeremiah. There can be no mistake. God told Jeremiah not to pray. Why? Why? God knew two things that Jeremiah did not know. He knew the people of Israel would neither listen to the prophet's message nor repent. And furthermore, he knew he would certainly send unquenchable judgment upon Israel. Once God's intention was to do all that had been revealed to Jeremiah, it would have been wrong for the prophet to pray for deliverance because God's plan has set and it is rebuilt. You cannot rebuild it. You can't go back. So God told him not to pray. You cannot change my will, my plan, my heart. Whenever he judges sin, it is wrong to pray against his judgment. Because judgment is said, how can you ask God to take it away, the judgment? And also that there will be grace beyond judgment for the people of God. Jeremiah was called to build as well as to tear down. So this is time to tear down. This is time to ask judgment. 
But we not end there. We not finish ourselves there because Jeremiah, he will build again. He will build again God's people. He will talk about, he will deliver messages, he will preach the gospel about the city of God once again will be rebuilt. But not this time. Wait. Wait upon the Lord. So you can see, Jeremiah chapter 31 is the new covenant chapter. Eventually, he would proclaim a new covenant, new Jerusalem, Messiah. So God had promised the ultimate deliverance of his people, but not this generation. And before God build once again and for last, this is the last test. They must pass through for them to be refined, purified, but to pass through punishment. This time you have to pass punishment. And this is test. Punishment is not the end. It is a test. And you fail the test, you fail. If you can have another test again, then you will see once you fail the test, the chances are rare for the next test. Once you fail your next test, your chances even get worse and rarer. The same principle applies to some of our own prayers. We are often aware of friends, family members who are in bondage to sin. One thing is so clear and sure is we cannot save them. You cannot rescue them. Only God can do that. Sometimes he allows people to hit rock bottom in their sin so that they have nowhere else to turn but back to him for salvation. That's what our last hope. So you have to pass the test. You don't pray this time, but you have to pass the test. The most important thing to remember is that God's command to Jeremiah for Jeremiah's times is not his command to us for our times. And you are blessed generations because you're not in the Jeremiah's time and their generation. Because God planned to do so. Often we are impressed with the similarities between the way God's grace works in the Old and New Testaments. But other times we are confronted with the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, between before Christ and after. And this is before Christ, and we are after Christ. So this is one of those times. And you don't use up those plenty of times given to us after Christ. You cannot see these endless chances you've given. Maybe today is your last day. Then your chance is the last chance today. Because today is your last day on earth. So do not count on that endless chances given after Christ. 
Though we live in gospel times, we live in the age of the risen Christ. You're the problem, isn't it? One of the biggest differences between living then and now is that we have a priest who prays incessantly for our salvation, the Lord Jesus who is sitting right hand of God the Father Almighty in our Apostles' Creed. He never stops praying for you. The Hebrew is emphatic. Jesus Christ always prays. If you read Hebrews chapter 7, verses 24 and 25, there our Apostles' Creed based on Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24, 5. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. Because he always lives to intercede for them. Always means forever. Lives to intercede for them. So your life is guaranteed forever. No sinner is beyond the reach of God's grace, and thus, no sinner is beyond the need for our prayers. When the Apostle Paul wrote to young Timothy, he gave him these instructions for prayer. 1 Timothy chapter 2, isn't it? We studied this hard and in recent days. God desires all kinds of men and women to be saved. So he instructs us to pray for the salvation for all kinds of men and women. No boundary is set to limit our prayers. And then, why were Jeremiah's people beyond the prayer? And this relates to us too. Even this happened before Christ. This is still happened after Christ. In your family, in your home, in every church. Why were they so far gone? People in Jerusalem, people of Judah. Why were they beyond the hope of redemption? So God commanded to Jeremiah not to pray. It was because of a collapse of family value. Collapse of family value. Children go against and rebel against their parents and their parents eat their children. How? You can see this passage. The people of God were not worshiping God in their homes. The life and fate of a people is born from the hidden life of the home. Hidden life of the home. If you have two separate lifestyles hidden in your home and open in church, you definitely belong to this group. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 7. But we still have chance because our Lord lives to intercede for us. The life and fate of a people is born from the hidden life of the home. That is why God took Jeremiah by the hand and led him to the threshold of the home of Jerusalem. Verse 17. Do you not see what they're doing in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? It means Jeremiah 
Have you ever seen their personal life, their hidden life in the home, homes? They, and then Jeremiah saw is verse 18, the children gather wood, the fathers light the fire, and the women near the door make cakes to offer to the queen of heaven. This is their hidden life in their homes. What Jeremiah saw was seemed to be a mother of family. Sounds like a barbecue they have, isn't it? Children gathered wood and they cook they're going to have a barbecue cook out in a backyard in their home with few neighbors probably and few friends probably, maybe their relatives and family members. The kids run around to get the kindling. Daddy builds the fire just the way he always built it. Mom is doing the cooking. Lady Jeremiah provides this secret recipe. If you go to the further down to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 19, when we burnt incense to the queen of heaven, poured out drink offerings to her, did not our husbands know that we were making cakes like her image and pouring out drink offerings to her. Graving beers on your hand, and these cakes would be imprinted with or shaped into the form of a woman. Box bunny. Easter egg, maybe. Who knows? The image is in it. Every holiday weekend, the people of Jerusalem spend quality family time together. And they, barbecuing, meets. Halal meats, probably. Kosher meats, probably. But notice what is wrong with this picture. While these families were drawing closer together, they were moving farther away from God. There is a no unified answer about the identity of this queen of heaven. Perhaps she was the Assyrian goddess Anna. Perhaps she was the Canaanite goddess Asherah, called Ishtar later. The Persians, from whom we get the word Esther and the word Easter, and you still use Easter. Exactly like Christmas, where we get Santa Claus. In any case, in the hidden life of the home, the people of Israel were trying to match the Lord God up with the spiritual mistress. Such idol worship made God angry. God's main point is not that he will punish you when you worship idols, but that you are punishing yourself when you worship them. You know, you worship idol, you're not harming God because it's just a mute idol. It cannot harm God in any way. It only harms you, yourself. Instead, you worship money and those images in it. Instead, you worship materials. Instead, you worship your mobile phones. You worship your children. You worship your parents. You worship your friends. Any can be the queen of heaven 
exactly queen of heaven is what Mother Mary, isn't it? No Catholic here today, this morning? What is queen of heaven? What about feminist 21st century? You have all the rights to abortion. You can control those infant, those uterine, unborn baby. It is under your right. Who gave it? A mother can decide a baby's life to kill or to live. Families left their homes and went to worship in God's house even further. Verse 21. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Go ahead. Are you going to go to church? Go ahead. Add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meat yourselves. You're not supposed to eat the burnt offerings. Because those meats, those animals killed and burnt offerings is perfectly burnt offering. No one can eat the meat. But God says, go ahead. You eat your burnt offerings. You eat it. And you will die in it. Jeremiah, you're not going to pray for them. It was the Israelites' highest bid for atonement. You know, burnt offering means for your redemption. You paying for your sins by those sacrificed and burnt animals. And you eat it. In the time of Jeremiah, before and after. You eat them all. Instead of burnt and hollow. Yahweh, give all up to God. You remember like the bull Elijah offered on Mount Carmel. It was supposed to be wholly devoted to the Lord alone. Yet God told them that their burnt offerings meant nothing, nothing to him. In any way, you have no redemption. You're not going to be atoned. Why was God so upset? Because God explained about it. Did I give you commandments when I take you out of Egypt? One thing I say is obey. Listen. To me, and I'll make you my people, and I will be your God. After that, I gave you commandments. Obey me. God wants their obedience as well as their worship. It was not wrong for them to sacrifice, but their sacrifices were in vain because they were not pursuing holiness. Their hidden life suddenly explains everything. Because God from beginning and then until Hosea, he declared, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So, Verse 29. Cut off your hair. Throw it away. Take up a lament on the barren hearts. For the Lord has rejected and abandoned this generation that is under his wrath. Truth has perished. It was vanished from their lips. 
when they say truth, when they quote or cite the Bible verse, that's in vain. That's vanished from their lips. Jeremiah's indictment make a suitable appetite for our own post-Christian culture. Truth has vanished from your home. And from the lips of our preachers, how much truth is on my lips? How much truth is on your lips? We are not people of the truth. We do not live among people of the truth. Because start with goddess worship. Goddess worship is all around us. It can be seen in a veneration of Mother Earth. You call it Mother Earth. What do you mean Mother Earth? Earth's born you know. It is God. Who created? It can be seen in the a fascination of the New Age movement of ancient goddesses. And some of you have read the book titled Da Vinci Code by a high school teacher. He wanted to write what he wanted. And it can be seen wherever liberal Protestants pray to Sophia. Have you ever heard? <laughs> Goddess worship can be seen wherever supermodels are found. On television and billboards and in your YouTube, SNS, Twitter, Facebook. There are many, many goddesses, many, many idols. And there is goddess worship in Roman Catholic. By the way, there is no queen in heaven. Am I right? Of course. Only a king in heaven. So this world is now paying the price for its various forms of goddess worship. So there is a straight path from the adoration of the queen of heaven to the abomination of the valley of slaughter. And the thing is here. In the valley of slaughter, parents kill their own children, commit themselves, devote themselves to queen of heaven. What way you sacrifice your children to the queen of heaven? We don't have that sort of thing in our life. How many extra work upon your children you lay them on? How much you emphasize about the study, study, Study. Do study or die. Do taekwondo or die. Do piano tutoring or die. How far we can go? What's your purpose to give them the best education? What's the purpose that you have best education they can have? Better job. Better social status. Where else has truth perished? Can you find the truth in their lives then? Can you find your truth in your life? You really believe you don't have any hidden life in your home. 
any hidden part in your idea, in your perception. Families are there to together worship God, together to teach the word of God. Family may worship a thousand gods and goddesses, but God sees this. You are there to teach the word of God. You're there in a home to show them how, why, and what you worship. That is why it is so absolutely necessary for us to worship God in our life. Do you want to see Reformation come to Australia and revival to the truth and revival to the church? Establish God's habits, godly habits in your home. If you do not worship Christ at home, then you must be pagans because families are made to worship. If you are not worshiping the one true God in the name of Jesus Christ, then you must be worshiping other God. So, you have to labor to sow the seed before you hear when you listen to God. Do not pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, if there is no compassion to the lost souls, what are we used for? Why are we here? Help us to found our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and help us to pray for this generation. For this generation is the hope for the next generation after them. Give us holy and pious life and help us not to have hidden life in our homes, in our personal life, but to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the gospel. Teach the gospel. Live the gospel. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.